Africa's son, a globetrotter, a father, and of course a mentor. I'm talking about Mr. DJ Groba. Oh my God. <laughs> What's up, girl? What an intro. I know, right? Monique, I, I just love how you do your thorough research on your work. Thank you so much. That back announcing of just... Ah, <laughs> Beautiful. I love that. It helps when you've yeah. got something to back announce oh, to, definitely. you know, and I something to talk about. I mean, you are a superstar in this country. <laughs> I love when superstars come. No, in fact, I was talking about how you back announced that song that ended. Yes. And all that detail and the movie reference and all these other guys. Nice. Beautiful research. Girl. Thank you so much. I love that. Also, that, yeah. that's one of my favorite things of listening to you. Nice. Thank you. I just you. love your research and your songs. Yeah. This it is amazing. It makes me now understand, oh, this is why it's like this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you check in and you sit right there and watch the entire experience. But, yes. you know, there's people like me who also look up to you and see how you do your work. And I think that's what has kept you relevant after all these years um, and we're going to get into your profile in just a bit but let me um, send this back and give it tenfold. Crowbar you are a talent, you are a mentor and you are still humble after all this time with all that talent oh, um, I mean w when you look at that I think it's the perfect recipe for why you are the way you are and why you're so successful in the business that you're in um, for the people who may not know mm -hmm. I gave my own intro Mm -hmm. Who is DJ Crowbar? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Crowbar is a believer. Yes. Is a husband. Yes. Is a dad. Yes. And uh, is a music lover. Yes. And a cyclist. I love motorcycles. A cyclist? Yes. I love motorbikes. I love that. Yes, yes. So I mean, that is usually my life. That's why it revolves around. Wow, I like yes, that. I didn't yeah. know that about you about bikes, but um, I think um, more of that detail will come in handy, especially yeah, yeah. when we're doing the traffic update. Some of those places where you need to learn how to how to ride, how to bike. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple of guys here, super excited that you're here. I can see Stan, mm -hmm. Sam on the timeline, um, and I can see Ronnie here saying, "Say hi to DJ Crowbar." What's and he up, says, Ronnie, "That's man. my guy." Checked I know in Ronnie. to yes. the Spice Drive. Great to have him on the timeline. And of course, there's a lot of people listening to you, to you right now, mm -hmm. and. And um, your story, your life, your career yeah. has taken you around the world doing great things. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, you're aligned with your passion. Yeah. When did Very you start true. DJing? I began DJing at the age of 19. I've been DJing since I'm, uh, I was 19. I'm not 34 years. 34 so looks good on you. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. What's no, happening? Yeah. <laughs> no, when it, me and you are just nearly the same. It's plus or minus one. Right? <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, I've been DJing since I was 19. Yes. And it's been quite a journey. Yeah. I never dreamt of, of this, yeah. of how my life has, uh, has ended up, uh, the trajectory it took. Yes. And everything is beyond what I ever thought or imagined. Yes. Yes. Why do you say that? It's because when I began DJing, DJing was not the way it is right now. Mm. Yes. That, that is back in 2004. Yes. So it was one of those careers you never venture into. It wasn't on TV. Yeah. It wasn't on mainstream radio. Mm. It was just a year later when Code Red and the whole team were on Capitol and mm. the whole nine yards. Yes. And when it went on TV, it was in the end of that decade, 208, 209 there. That's yes. It, that's when things began picking. Yes. Other than that, I've quit DJing twice between 204 and 209. Wow. Because of how frustrating it was. I mean, that's crazy because yeah. um, yesterday on our treadmill topic, one of the conversations that we had was what advice would you give your younger self? Mm -hmm. And the top comment was failure is the most beautiful, beautiful option. Oh, man, you learn a It's lot. the only option. Yeah. Because failure actually makes you go back again, go back in the ring and do the yes. things that you love. Yeah. Um, if you were to go back in time, would you have, you know, quit twice um, the way you're talking about it? Like you, you left the thing that you love and somehow in a beautiful way, Boy, you're, you're here yes. doing it again. I think I would, I think I would still have quit because... It was very frustrating yeah. when you when you love something yes. so much, and this is all that you can do. Mm. This is the only thing that you can do, mm. and you let it go. Just know you've been frustrated properly. Mm. It's just that on the flip side, it was the only thing I was good at. I I always found myself going back. Yes, or DJing looking for me. The first time I quit, I yes. said I'm not DJing again. I don't want to do this ever DJing again. DJing came looking for me. Wow. Opportunities to come and DJ came calling again. The second time I quit and I say, this is it. Mm. DJing came looking for me and that's when I won the DJing competition. Wow. 
it, it, ma, it's man. like it was meant to be. <laughs> it was meant to be. At that point, that's when I realized this is it. There's no running because away from I, this thing. I'd been DJing for four years. Yes. Because it's now 204, it's now end of 208. Yes. And I'm like, me, I'm done with this. Mm. And then my buddy says, there's this competition and you might just be the guy. I've seen you DJing over the years. Yes. I've never seen a DJ DJ like you. Wow. Well, tell us about more about this competition because what are the odds? Someone tells you about something. Yes. And then you just, you know, yes. half-baked, cold turkey, so, you go in there. This is my best friend. Yes. His name was DJ Gigi. Yes. Gigi said, listen, my guy, I've, we've been friends for the last like six years. Yes. I've never seen anyone DJ like you. This competition might just be it for you. Yes. So what we did, it was known as Pilsnam Falmi. So what we did was we went for the auditions. Yes. And we watched all these DJ audition, 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 audition in Nairobi. And we were like, my guy. Yes. You can win. Now my confidence was boosted a hundred times more mm. because I saw the caliber of DJs. Yes. And I'm here w with my best friend and we are like, dude, this is it. This is the opportunity. Yeah. And from there, we're not looking back. It's the best thing you ever did. Yeah, it's, it's it's definitely the best decision. And I think had. sometimes you need people to see what you don't see. Yeah. Um, to open your eyes a little bit mm -hmm. because, I mean, creative people are special. And from time to time, you need that extra push, that pat mm -hmm. in the back. Very that true. That extra, that comfort in knowing that, you know what, someone else sees this in me. I'm standing on the faith of what they see. Yeah. Uh, because sometimes I can tell you for free, yeah. this has happened to a lot of creatives who are probably oh, listening right many. now. Yes. And even if they're not in the creative business, I think in your journey through life, you've had moments where you're thinking, I can't do this. Yes. I am discouraged. Probably this is not even for me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you were in that. I'm curious to know when you stepped back from the game and you decided, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. You said twice. Yes. What did you do? What, what did you end up doing? Um, maybe you started a florist shop or something. <laughs> you, I, I mean, I'm curious. What else would DJ Crowbar do? So what happened was uh, I actually started, be, uh, I was a studio assistant yes. at a studio in Langata. Yes. That was owned by a guy known as DJ Rick. I don't know whether you know DJ Rick. Yes, I know DJ Rick. Yes. So DJ Rick had a studio and I used to uh, be his studio assistant in that studio. And you never missed DJing at all? I did. Yeah. I did. To be honest with you, I mm. did miss DJing because the, uh, Rick himself is a DJ. Yes. So he, we were doing a couple of voiceover work, a couple mm. of productions there, and the DJ gear was there. Yes. So it's one of those, you do what you have to do, you do your mixing, you do your recording, and then when you're finished with your mix and stuff, you turn yeah. to the DJ gear, right. and then you flex a little bit. You're like, oh, I, I, I wish I could do this nice. again. Yeah, 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 this is nice. Wow. And then, hey, what's up, Crowbar? Uh... We are looking for DJs. Do you mind being part of the crew? That was Kubamba crew at that point. Oh my goodness. That's where it began. Yes. Just like that. And that's how I joined Kubamba. You are a walking child yes, of chance. Yes, in 208. Your passion's been following you your entire life. All my life. And you can't run away from it. It's you pretty clear right you can't, now. You can't run away from that. And then from there, winning the competition, then a whole year we DJed on TV, yes. on, on, uh, on NTV. Yes. And then from there... The following year, I got married in 2010. Yes. Then 2011, KTN came knocking. Yes. In fact, KTN came knocking through DJ Styles. Do you see how DJ comes looking for me? Wow. And I think it's also important, um, yes. you're saying it in different words, that you need to be around people that are for you or probably you need... have the same interests as you do. As much as you can socialize with everybody else. Yeah. But alignment is everything. It's always good for you to have people who know where you are mm. and believe in where you are going. Mm. I, I don't think I would have been here if it wasn't for Styles. Styles is the one. Styles at that point used to do this Saturday show uh, by Catrix. Yes. What's the name of this show? Um, there, was, there was a Saturday show. W with Cheryl. They yes. did it with Cheryl. Yes. Yes. Every, every Saturday on KTN Home. It was Straight Styles, Up. Straight yes. Up. Exactly. Yes. So Styles and Eve D'Souza used to do Straight Up. Yes. I remember that very So clearly. when KTN were uh, they were looking for a, a gospel DJ. Who did they ask for a DJ? Styles. And then you. Who did Styles know as a DJ? Me. So Look Styles says, what's up? How are you, Crowbar? There's something here. You're going to get a phone call. And boom. If it wasn't for Styles. Wow. <laughs> very interesting story. And how I met Styles? I met Styles to the DJ competition. 
and he, was, he remembered he you. He was one of the judges, mm. and I won the competition. How can Styles forget who, the guy who won? Look at that! And you know, <laughs> when you when you remember the people that held your hand at that time, it says yes. a lot about your personality oh, and your man. character. Yeah, because I think the industry has a lot of young people who. Um, claim that there's a lot of OGs who don't hold their hand and support them, mm -hmm. you know, the industry. Um, you're going to struggle until you get there. Mm -hmm. It's run by certain people. But I think you disagree because your journey has been built by people uh, who see definitely. a lot of potential in you. Yeah. Um, I love what you said, especially, um, I think it's the cherry on top before we mm -hmm. wrap up this hour. Mm -hmm. um, you said you need people that Believe. See, believe where yes, you are yes. and see where you're going. Very I, I, I absolutely love that. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're going to get into um, today's trend mill topic, which is an interesting one, particularly okay. because you're here. I must indulge you on this one. And it's all okay. about relocating for love. Mm -hmm. In the next hour, we're going to get into that trend mill topic. We're going to have the record rumble. He says he loves music. So we're going to put two amazing tracks head to head. As you know, right here, you can watch the show and listen. If you're in Nairobi, that's 94.4. And of course, um, I've got all your frequencies on lock on your timeline so make sure you are following on social as well i'm hanging out with dj crowbar your social media please at dj crowbar on all platforms oh my gosh you sound like you're on air or i feel <laughs> like I'm, I'm watching you on sunday let me tell you monique i love radio i can, radio I can hear it i can, I can hear it you know, I can tell the way they've processed your voice. You sound so nice. Oh my gosh, thank Chick. you so much. You know, I'm an audio engineer, <laughs> so I, I'm like, oh man, that compressor is working on your voice so well. And it yeah. helps. It yeah. helps that you went and perfected your gift. Oh, that's another story. I can't Chick. wait. Oh I, man, you will love that one. It's, it's gonna a be, crazy move, it's, it's, but you love it. It's yeah. going to be a long chat with my special guest right here in the studio. I'm hanging out with DJ Crowbar. Follow DJ Crowbar with a K. If you use a C, you're going to be following somebody else. Anyone in the creative business. Yes. Like anyone who sings, anyone who, do, who does music, yes. painting. Yes. All these creative people, the first thing they face is rejection. Mm. And the most painful thing, the rejection comes from the most closest people in your life. Fact. From your parents, from mm. your sisters, from your aunties, uncles, people who do not understand. Why, why, why are you DJing? Mm. I mean, you, 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 you are a bright guy. What, what the heck? And to us, you you're wildly thought, talented. Yes. People thought I, I, I am a wasted brain. Wow. The first four years. Yes. What? When I was quitting DJing is because of how much rejection mm. was coming from people I was not expecting rejection mm. from. Mm. And these are the people that are supposed to hold you yes. up. Yes. Like, and encourage yes. you. And maybe the people that are in your same industry have a lot of support from home. Mm. You've got everyone rooting for you. Yeah. But you, on the other hand, have to battle with just the acceptance from the people that you love the most, the people that naturally you feel mm -hmm. would gravitate towards seeing you pro uh, progress. Prosper, yeah. yeah. But that didn't quite happen no. um where did you get that lease of life and said okay fine this is it uh win or lose i'm going in with this the, the people who who came into my life mm. the people who are in my life at that point yes i intentionally chose i intentionally made a decision to surround myself yeah. with people who do what i do mm. who believe in what i do mm. who see a future in what we do mm. I remember there's a guy known as Pion who told me, one day you will be changing the industry. One day mm. you'll be the guy making stars in this game. One day. I remember at around 2012, 2014 there mm. and going for Groove Awards and seeing the people nominated. Yes. And then seeing what a role God provided for me for these careers to blossom yes and uh, sorry and you cry seeing how how that prophecy is coming true yeah looking at these young kids blossom seeing their careers come alive mm. because god placed you somewhere yeah and now they are making something out of it because god placed you there and you realize it's oh. bigger than you. Come on, Crowbar. Um, oh my shout God. out to my producer, Jules. Jules, can you send in a box of tissues real quick? <laughs> I told you we need box of tissues in here. And so. lots of coffee. <laughs> Let's get it done. Let's get it done. Um, I hear you. And you know, there's something about you even yeah. um, to people that do not know you on a personal level. People connect with you and they gravitate towards you organically. Yeah. And I know we're living in that um, get the trending on mm -hmm. cloud chasing era. However... 
it still matters when you're authentic. It still matters where you come from. It still matters what your story is about. And maybe that is one of the things about you that makes it the X factor. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, Dex are Dex. And I, yes. no disrespect to every DJ listening mm-hmm. into the show right now. In my mind, just like me, it's just a voice. I'm a presenter. I mean, I'm just... It's the same software. It's It's the thing. Many other people can sit in this chair. Many other people can do what you do. But what is it about you that you think that people are drawn to? Because naturally, whether you're DJing, um, and I think I specifically saw this when you said that you were leaving the country. Yeah. That is when I was like, wow, (laughs) you're memorable. Yeah. They're going to miss you. And I, and I thought to myself, okay, I mean, there's a thousand DJs, come on. And I thought it can't be about that. But you understood that the platform is bigger than you. And that's why when I posted you up, mm-hmm. my phone's buzzing right now. And everyone's like, Krober, Krober, but that's my man, that's my man. I'm like, yeah, 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 he's, he's an amazing guy. Did you ever realize the impact? Because you're saying also seeing other people yeah. stand on the platform that you gave them. Mm-hmm. Does it does it does they, it make you does it make you just look back and think okay what is going on I'm actually very grateful and well At aware first, there's yes. there's something you've mentioned here mm. that um I I understand mm. DJing is not everything for me Yes even though I love it so much it is a tool mm. it is a tool that I use to impact yes. the people who come in my environment. Yes. It is a tool that I use. And in this tool, people don't want fakeness. They want authenticity. Boss. So when I'm around my peeps or anyone who follows me, I'm, I'm, I'm not out here online to be fake. Yeah. I want authenticity. I want someone to connect with me because there's a human connection here. There's something tangible. There's something real. Yeah. We are not trying to commercialize on what we have. Yeah. Yeah. But what would you say to, yeah. um, because you're a force in the gospel industry and you've seen it over 10 years grow, evolve, mm-hmm. change. Um, I mean, people are trying left, right and center to stay relevant. And cloud chasing is literally the heart of the business today. Mm-hmm. Everyone feels that they need to be something mm-hmm. based on what they think the people want. And um, as media, we're guilty of misleading a lot of you know a big part of the audience mm-hmm. but it is what it is um and I, I i love interviews like this where we've got experts coming in people who've um walked through that journey mm-hmm. to break it down for us um the gospel in- industry has been under scrutiny over the last five mm-hmm. or ten years yeah um recently my brother got married and we were looking for a nice gospel playlist yes um just good songs <laughs> we just don't want any trouble yeah we just want some good songs or we go you know to the to the you know backyard jams and have yes. you know house party music from the 90s or the mm-hmm. 80s because you know that's safe yeah i could throw in some teddy pendergrass you know when somebody loves you back but mm-hmm. when you're thinking if I was to curate a gospel playlist, I, I, I'm not sure what they're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not sure what the music is going to be like. Um, you need the, when, you, when it comes to music, yes. as a guy who's, who's DJed for a while, yes. you need to come into the mindset that the sound changes after every four or five years. Four or five four years. Four or five years, expect the sound to change. Yes. If you listen to the song released in the year 2020, yes. and then listen to a song that was released in 2016 or 2015, you'll hear the difference. Mm. If you listen to something that was released in 2016 and then listen to something that that came out in 2011 or 2010, yes. you will hear the difference. So after every four or five years, and this is not only in Kenya, this is an international phenomenon. Yes. It happens. Mm. After every four or five years, the sound changes yes the 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 question here is are you ready to acclimatize Mm. that is one Mm. because there's a graphic there's a graph for listening to music for example if my hand is the 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 music coming out and the age group yes so from the ages of zero to five 10, 15, 20, 25, the graph is going up. So mm. you are constantly consuming new music. Mm. So when you hit the, the 25 mark, it starts going down. Mm. You hit 30, 
you go all the way to 35. So it starts going back up when you go 40, 45 again when your kids are teenagers. Mm. Because they're now listening to new music and you're like, oh, this is all. Oh, oh, so this is Justin Bieber. <laughs> and you wonder how come these old parents know who Justin Bieber? Yes. Because that's the curve of listening to new music. Right. You understand? Right. So where are you in the curve? Right. That's why when someone gets a job and stuff, they don't have time for new music. I hear you. Yeah, when you have new kids, you're like, ah, man. You start getting to know new music because of your kids. I hear you. And it also um, brings us to um, one of my favorite segments on this show. Yeah. It's called The Record Rumble, where we take, oh, okay. we take a super old song, uh -huh. which is, um, of course, uh, the inspiration for a new song. And you mm -hmm. find that the younger kids are also listening to the old. And the older people are yeah. listening to a little bit of the young music. Yeah. And the results of that Record Rumble surprise us every single time. We're going to get into it in just a bit. I've got Aretha Franklin, who's going to be on it a little bit later on. But I know part of your journey yeah. um, took you across the borders. Yeah. You recently came back. Yes. I remember bumping to you in the office and I said, oh my God, you're back. Yay. <laughs> and so was the timeline. I mean, social media was awash with, Kroba's back. No, it's a rumor. No, no, no. He's actually back. Yeah. Um, and of course, I want to shout out your beautiful family. Yeah. Your wife, um, you recently had a new addition. Yes, um, got to, a son. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> so you're not a dad girl anymore. I love being a father of girls, and I'm just humble now we have a son. Is it confusing? Like, what do I do with a boy? No, no, no. I'm, I'm not confused because Joy actually really prayed for us to have a boy. So Listen, us having a son is Joy's prayer. You need to yeah. um, call Mr. Bet and see what the prayer, <laughs> what, how you did the prayer. Um, <laughs> I'm, 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 uh, he's a dad girl now, so maybe he, he, he may want because a boy. Because fathering girls is special. It man. is beautiful. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. I love it. Mm. I love it to the core. I mean, yeah. you are a fantastic dad. You're busy, your schedule, yeah. everything. And you still traveled. At the time, you were a father of girls. Yes. Um, and uh, shout out to Joy. Yes. Um, she recently had a new one. Yes. And she's been with you every step of the way. Yeah. Where did your journey begin? Um, wh journey when, when did Joy come into the picture? Was it after... For us going to... For us relocating for to South Africa. For meeting and then relocating. Uh, Joy, I, I met Joy in church when, yes. I, when I just got saved at yes. the age of 20. That's what that's when we met. Yes. So friendship, friendship. At 23, I decided, hey, man, I need to settle down now. You were send, sending her gospel mixtapes? I nah, know. How did no. you? Joy was a thorough. Joy is a, I'm a liberal. Yes. I'm a liberal. Yes. Joy is a thorough church girl through and through. That's the thing. <laughs> so, 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 so how did you get your first date? Um... Our first date happened when, no, I had known Joy. So me and Joy used to, we, we had known each other over the years. Yes. So at, uh, what happened was in 2008, I got to a place where I felt something is about to happen. Yes. I felt my life would change by the time the year ended. Yes. So I thought, let me settle down before I become big so that when I become big, I'm already rooted somewhere. Yes. I did not want this confusion markiness that comes. You know, you know, Monica, our career, if you're not settled, it can really swear you away. Absolutely, I think. And I was fortunate enough to have seen it. Yes. Now I'm like, ah, I don't want to make decisions like this. Yeah. Let me settle down early so that when that time comes, me, yes. I'm already rooted. Yes. So long story short, went for our first date and I told her, I'm interested in you. And Joe was like, ah, no, I'm going to pray for you to get a good girl. Karosh, I've known you for years. I'm going to stand with you. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to stand with you. I'm, I'm going to pray for you to get a... You're thinking, listen, we've prayed. You're my wife. Oh, man. It's going to happen. And for me, I made a very simple prayer. Yes. And extremely... In fact, it's a very funny prayer. I told God, how I'll know my wife is the chick will put sugar in my tea or put a straw in my drink. That's how I'll know my wife. What what do you what do you mean? A very simple prayer. The, the, wait wait yes. wait! I need to understand this because so that you had a you had a that was going to be the hint. That was going to be the hint for me. The one who'd put sugar in your sugar tea. in my tea or a straw in my drink. That's how I know my. Is life. that a figure of speech? No. Or literally? It was just literally that was my prayer. A very simple prayer. So on one of these dates, we go out. In fact, the first one yes. that I took her out, yes. we went bought some two juices and mm. some queen cakes. Yes. And we went to Memorial Park. Yes. Bomb Blast. Yes. There at uh, Heli Selassie. You got to love this throwback love. So we went there, uh, open our paper bag, Joy removes the juice, opens it, puts a straw. So I'm oh. going for mine too. I'm going for mine. <laughs> yes. And then she says, here. You're like, bam. My mind goes like, Phew. this is it. This is the guy. 
Oh my God! You need that's to talk even... to her. you need to talk to our young brothers. <laughs> you need to talk to our young brothers. They're like, listen, that's that's not it. Oh my God! And then Wait. I know I'm telling her right now. So we chill, chill, vibe, vibe. I tell her she's like, oh no, I'm going to pray for you. I'm like, ah, God, me, I have my answer. You're like, I seen the as strong long already. as I do not get a clear cut no. And it's good we tell boys this. Yes. If a girl says no to your face, that is it. No, go away. Mm. If she say, if if she, if it's not a clear cut no, you can continue yes, no. pursuing. No, no, no. The girls girl. do yes. girls do the yes no. The yes no yes. means pursue me a little so bit more. So Joy never said a clear cut no <laughs> on my face. I have been rejected before, yes. so I know what a no is. She was like, no. Joy was like, I'm gonna pray for you to get a good girl. <laughs> that was hard. So I'm like, oh man. Wow. She didn't say no. We are at it again. When are you free next? So I just kept on pursuing, 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 pursuing. But I told her, I have a plan. The day you'll say yes, I'm going to tell you the plan. Yes. So Joy, on one of those days, she she asks me on one of our dates, so what's the plan? So you want to hear the plan? And it's like, oh, yes, I want to hear the plan. If you say yes right now, I'm marrying you in 2010. Oh my gosh, Kroger, and then, wait a minute. <laughs> and, then, and then she's like, what? In 2010? Yes. When? And I say, April. And she says, April is too soon. Then when do you want it? Uh, let's make it August. And just like that, we were on. From that point onwards, we were working towards the wedding. And you definitely got married in 2010. Oh man, and we got married in actually the first week of September. September 3rd. End of August. <sighs> wow, let me reintroduce you. Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we've got DJ Crowbar. He's not only a DJ, he's a prophet. And um, <laughs> he can speak into the future. And he's going to be having workshops to young men to understand where your wife could just be that girl. Oh she could God. be the lady around there. You know, I, I thought I figured you out. So, so, so now you're a cyclist. You're a DJ. You're also a prophet. <laughs> and, you know, no, looking what? back, I'm like, this is a beautiful love story. It and, is, it is. Um, yeah. It's important for the kids to know this story um, as they grow. Yeah. Um, I didn't know this side of you. And Joy is a blessed and beautiful woman. Uh, Joy is a rock star. And she's been with you. And in my so, culture, we believe yes. that the woman that you're with can determine how your life ends. Oh, up. my gosh. Monique, my life is the way it is right now because of joy. I would have never gone to South Africa if it, if it wasn't for my wife. Yes. I had a studio in my house. I yes. used to do a lot of voiceover work, jingles, adverts, composing music for all these things. That's what I used to do. Mm. But every time I used to work, I used to reference my work with international work. Yes. And then I would get very frustrated because my works are not sounding world class. Yeah. So my wife noticed my frustrations. Do you know what she did? She sent me a link of the 20 best schools in the world for audio engineers. Wow. And I'm like, baby, you are the craziest chick ever. Yeah. I'm like, why? Why, why, why would you send me this? I'm like, I think you need this skill. I, I, I'm like, honestly, I do. Yeah. But we cannot afford this. Yes. It's like, I'm, I'm just concerned about you. And then my wife kept on following through with schools yes. and then she kept on asking did you look at that link again and i'm like yes i did but i don't have time for this because we can't afford these things yes some of these things tuition fees 10 million shillings where how am I are we going to gonna afford this? exactly yeah. where am i where, where am i getting these tunes yes long story short my wife said listen where you are going you are not going to study this because you need the engineering so badly yeah is because you're going to be something else in the future. Wow. That's what she told me. And you're going to school, brah. If this is what you want to study, if you need this skill, you go get this skill. But you're going to school. Chick, we paid a deposit, registration fee, I applied. And the next Got thing on social media, the next thing we is, saw we you applied. had gone. We saw you had left. Here we go. We decide we can't afford the school. We have to sell everything. We sell everything to afford that tuition fee. Wow. We go to SA. SA was, oh, SA was one of the best decisions we ever made. Wow. We, <laughs> church. Church. We needed the seclusion. We yes. needed to be. We needed to be set apart. Mm. That was necessary. Because out of that, I was able to go to school. I really thrived in school. Yeah. I'm actually graduating at the top of my class. Wow. I really thrived in school. Yeah. Me and Joy, we had time to talk about things. 
Mm. You know, we were very busy people here in Kenya. Mm. Now in SA, I'm not working. I'm mm. just schooling and teaching and homeschooling my kids. There was time to talk. We talked about stuff. You know, babe, the day you did this and this and this. I'm like, what? Yeah. Kumba, I hurt you like this. Ah, my God. I'm so sorry. Oh, do you remember the day they did? So we, there was a lot of covering ground that mm. was necessary. You didn't even know you needed it. We didn't even know we needed it. Mm. It was absolutely important. So the rediscovery, learning each other oh all over again, gosh. and also having that ventilation from the people that you thought were home, mm -hmm. you had to go and make home again in a foreign country. There we go. And today's trendmill topic is all about that, whether people would actually relocate for mm -hmm. love. She did it for love. She did it. She did it for you. She believed in it. Because this. the opportunity yes. in South Africa was not just, it was actually specifically for you yes um not for her it wasn't so she her. had to figure out how the kids were going to be studying mm -hmm. and you decided to homeschool them yes and then you decided to toss yourselves in a foreign land mm -hmm. um you pursuing your dream yeah because she saw something bigger in yes you. yes is this a real wife <laughs> Guys, Joy is a you, Joy she's, is a gym, she's the girl with the straw. She's the girl with the <laughs> straw. That's the girl. That's the girl. I think that's the thing. <laughs> she's the girl with the straw. She's the girl with the exactly. straw. Make yes. sure you get yourself a girl with the straw, guys. And maybe, <laughs> maybe, just maybe, you may be married to someone who'd relocate for love. You know, it's a tricky situation because um, some people would look at the opportunity at hand and say, okay, what about me? I know it's a plus for you as my husband, but. What That's about me? That's a very good question. Do you know when we were in South Africa, yeah. Joy asked herself, what about me? Mm. And in the process, she found some amazing skills when she was there. Mm. She became an amazing designer because of interacting with world-class designers in Cape Town. Wow. She grew. The amount of growth this girl got in that land, even she herself was not expecting it. I think the big question, um, yeah. Kroba, for you, and it's beautiful, it's rosy. I yeah. mean, I can't even understand how you guys are not ma made for each other. Um, she relocated for love for you yeah. as her husband. Very true. Um, there's something about women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if you're with the right one, there's always a potential, you know, some sort of potential in a man. And boom, if you marry the right one, you're good. Um, would you have done the same for your wife? I would. If she had... Do you know we had this discussion even before we got married? Yeah. We had a discussion where if any of us ever relocates for over six months, we are all going together. We're not living separately. We are not living separately if it's over six months. We are all going. It was a discussion we had before we got married. So there were a couple of things we decided we were going to do. If they ever come, they already decided. Wow. So if this comes like this... We know this is what is happening next. So when the opportunity to go to South Africa came, we knew we, all of us we are going. Did you have It any... was bloody expensive, but we knew, come what me. Yes. All of us. We are all going. We're all packing up. Did you have any reservations from close family who were like, what, what the hell are you oh, man. people doing? Every... <laughs> <laughs> are you insane? Are you absurd? You have a DJing career. Mm -hmm. You have a studio. Mm. You are doing ads that are running on TV, yes. that are running on YouTube. What takes you there? Are, are you crazy going to school? Do you know if you come back, you'll find things have changed? I'm like, hey, dude, obedience is better than sacrifice. Hey. <laughs> I just came to work. I just came to work. I hope you've got your notebooks. Yeah. The conversation is ongoing right here on The Spice Drive. 24 minutes past four. I can't believe we've been talking for 24 minutes. I love wow. it. And you know, the most beautiful thing is also for talking to our young girls to understand that um, the man you want exists, but there's a little bit of work you need to put into it. And what are you bringing to the table? A lot of women have conversations of what does he do for me? Mm -hmm. What am I getting out of it? It's always about that. Mm -hmm. That is the narrative. Mm -hmm. But it need, also needs to change because it's about what are you willing to put on the line wow. for your relationship? I wow. mean, shout out to Joy. She needs to come. Um, she needs to come. She I needs wish to come here. I, I want to hear. Yeah. I want to hear. Yeah. Um, you know, the Her kind, perspective. The kind yes. of things you do right before you <laughs> cycle and before you go for your DJ sets and stuff like that, and, and and what kind of person you are. But from what I hear, it's a symbiotic relationship, it is. and it is. Um, I think maybe this transition made you guys. Um, 
also get even closer to each oh other without God. the noise oh my of God. friends and relatives and 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 you know the stuff you know when you had to unlearn was, a lot this was necessary there was a lot of unlearning Limitation is a mental thing. Yeah. Um, wherever it is that we were back in the day and where we are now, mm. um, it's only upwards from here. Very and true. and and looking at you, mm. when you talked about um, quitting twice, um, that's like a totally different guy from yeah. the guy that I'm sitting across oh, right man. now. Very true. And you came back from South Africa. Now you're on our screens every weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, not every DJ has that optical Very nutrition. True. <laughs> um, you know, optical nutrition is, is a thing. Huh? <laughs> it has to be um, visually appealing. So there's DJs who play great, but not everyone can be on TV. You know what I mean? TV is a thing. TV is a thing. And, and, and you oh come, you, <laughs> you're on TV. Let me tell you a funny story I went through with my old producer. <laughs> yeah. My old producer noticed that I was gaining weight. And yes. she said, hey, 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 Kroba, Kroba, yeah? Hmm. You need to watch on your waiter. Eh? You're on TV. What? And that's when I realized TV is no joke. TV, TV. Shout out to everyone who who works. Anyone in, who does TV in that just, business. Uh, TV is a. Uh, it's a totally different ball. It's game. a ball game that time. right. Very few people understand. Yes. Yeah. You watch TV, but you don't understand. It. You don't know what it takes. Yes. The science behind it, mm. and you know, right here, our uh, sister brand, uh, KTN Home, yes, um, has amazing talents. Very true. There is so much to watch. And you're one of the guys that we get to watch every single weekend. Yeah. When you came back from South Africa, did you think that you still had that opportunity to be on TV? How did that come, up, come about? That, that meeting actually came about when I was coming to see Ndiema. Yes. Then Ndiema said, let's go say hi to our former boss. Yes. And out of that one single meeting yes. of catching up, catching up ended up being we have to do something again. Wow. Look at you. <laughs> Your life is just... These don't happen. Yeah. Monique, in the in the entertainment business, these things don't happen. You don't go for years and come back and find the same thing you were doing waiting for you. Mm. Th- this is a pure miracle. Yes. Wh- whichever industry, this is entertainment, let's say banking, whatever. If you go and come back, you'll find someone else is doing it. I mean, yeah. it's yeah, constantly, it's never constantly a lack changing of human as well. Resource. Yes. So when you find some the same opportunity waiting for you, ah man, it's I'm a real blessed blessing. Beyond, I'm blessed beyond it, measure. It's a real blessing. And then on top of that, with the new skills that I have and yes. the plans that we have with the management on how to implement these new skills here, yes, and how to strat- and the strategies that we have, the yes. convergence things that we are talking about yes. and applying it here, yes. And ah man, it's it's the future is just beautiful. I mean, whatever we've seen is just a drop in the ocean yes, of what's yes, coming for the yes, rest of the year. Very true. Um, I thoroughly enjoy what you guys have. You've rebranded. Yes. And you're on air every Sunday. Yeah. And you co-host with some great people. Yes, with Ndiema, Stella, yes. and Gigi. Shout out to these guys. Um, yes, shout out to them. Um, they need to come through as well one of these days uh-huh. um, for entertaining us and doing what few people can do. Yes. Um, I think it's, it's, it's great. So you guys have what we call Sunday Best. Yes. The show is known as Sunday Best, airs every Sunday. It's actually a simulcast. Yes. On both KTN Home and BTV. Nice. From 7 a.m. to noon. And so and that, uh, so it's a double audience. Yes. So one audience is a different demographic. The other audience is a different demographic. Yes. And I love these challenges. And you cater for everyone. Ah, man, man. We cater for everyone. As yes. we resonate with whoever watches. Yes. And the chemistry yes. is real. Yeah. And... Ah, me and me and Dema, we go way back. Yeah. So me and him, we are genuine friends. Yeah. I mean, we've been friends for now nearly a decade. We got married nearly the same time. So it's a friendship that has been there for so, so long. Yes. yes. I mean, that's a lot on Sunday morning from yes. 7 to midday. To midday. That's on KTN Home and yeah. on BTV. Yes. And of course, people can also um, check you out on social media. Yes. Um, do you actually tweet for yourself? Because you're super friendly online. Oh, yes, I Is do. Is that you or you've I got uh, I your team? I respond. You've got your There's, team. On, on Sundays, there mm. are people who handle it for me. Yes. But in between the week, ah, I respond. I respond myself. Like yes. now, yes. I can see Sally David here saying, absolutely enjoying the show. Yeah. Um, there's someone here called Nyar Abila. She says, say a big hi to Crowbar. Um, she's given a lot of detail about you guys going way back. And um, she's asking how Christine is um, mm-hmm. and your other sisters. Um, oh, you go my way back. sisters. Yes. Oh, yes. 
yes. she's listening into the show. So shout out to you, Nya Abila. Um, doing well. yeah. yeah, I can also see Stan on the timeline here listening into the show, saying great conversation. And of course, um, for everyone who is thinking of relocating mm -hmm. or has a partner who's relocated, this is some great inspiration. Wow. And it's tough that I have to let you go. I mean, I can't believe it's a tough We had a good time. We had a great time. Good You're morning. coming back. Amen. You're coming back with the kids and Joy. Um, <laughs> and um, I'm sending her hugs and kisses. Um, and well, the kids as well. Yes. Before I let you go, mm -hmm. um, I think the final question would be about today's treadmill topic about relocating for love. Yeah. Um, today, a lot of people would drop marriage. In at the snap. next Snap. Next opportunity, whatever comes. Yeah. The grass is green on the other side or probably where you water it, depending mm -hmm. on how you look at life. Um, what encouragement would you have for people in that situation? Money is tight. An opportunity has come. Mm -hmm. Not for both of you, but for one of you. Mm -hmm. um, there's people who'd say, oh, definitely, I'm going for the money. The I'm gonna, biggest I'm gonna thing walk I would away. say, yeah. money comes and goes. Mm. Monique, we've made money and we've lost money. Yes. In our careers. Mm. We've made and we've lost. Yes. We've made, we, we've been played. Mm. Both, you name it, it has happened to us. That's like a new show you have to come but back But we're from. still here. Right. We're still here doing what we do. Yes. So the thing is this, understand the calling of your partner. Mm. Understand this is what they're called for. Yes. And stand with them. Yes. I need to understand this is what Joy is good at. And mm. I'm going to, you know, when, when we got married, I actually invested in my wife's business first. Yeah. I said, there are things we need to buy for my DJing career. But I believe in what you're doing. Mm. And I'm going to invest in you. And that's what we did. For the first four years of our marriage, I invested in joy. So the idea is understand. This, this is where your calling is. I'm going to make sure yeah. you are the best that there is in what you do. Wow, that is so powerful. I'm yeah. sure there's a couple of people I listening mean, in. And they else? probably do not know the calling. They probably I mean, do not know the calling of their better half yes. or care for it. Mm. Or even care for or even, it. Or even don't even understand. They're like, what do you mean uh, that's your calling? Yes. I hear you. Yes. What do you want to do? Oh, is this what you, this is what gives you peace? Then let's make sure you are doing it so that you are as, as peaceful as possible at all times. Monique, we don't need to be motivated to come on air. Yeah. We are not motivated. We love this. Mm. We will do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. Mm whether here or anywhere else, in a heartbeat we will do it because we love it and we understand the power and we know our responsibility as human beings to other human beings when we are on air. In a blink of an eye. So once we understand the calling of our partners, we, we will support them. Yes. Mm. Me, me, I'll do it in a blink of an eye. I'll do it again. Wow. You're one step ahead for sure. Um, you need a workshop for all the guys <laughs> listening into the show right now. Do you know? I am inspired. I just realized the other day. Yes. Me and my social media guy. Yes. I actually have more male following than female following. Yeah. And I love it. I love that I'm impacting the next generation of men. Yeah. And I realize most of my followers are my own peers. Mm. It's between 35 and 25. My own peers. Mm. And I love the fact that we are influencing each other now. Yes. On how to be husbands, how to be dads, how to follow our careers, how to do things right. You understand? Because some of the inspirations we have, yes, we have deadbeat dads, we have dads who are there, we have dads who are not there. Yes. You know, some shenanigans, things that happen. And most of the us. time, yeah. all the good men get roped up in that as well. And they don't get the credit that they deserve. And it's great to have people like you come on shows like this. Mm -hmm on a nice sunny afternoon to keep it real and talk about your journey and mm. inspire without even you know struggling to do that i'm monique i'm ready to share my story because i know my story will affect very many people yes and people will make better decisions yeah there's nothing as powerful as that you, you share a part of your story and you know this will make someone make a better decision by all means this is the story let's Hear do it, it. Let's do it. It has been Monique, an absolute it has been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you. You are amazing, yeah. my man. <laughs> <Thank you so much. laughs>